Chris Broussard is now joining us. Uh, brought to you by Mercedes Benz, the best or nothing. Okay, so I'm watching LeBron yesterday. I'm absolutely amazed. When you look at what is happening to the other stars, Giannis, f- forget the injury for a second, he really shrank. Uh, Harden, I thought last night and other games has disappeared. Westbrook unraveled. He'll be back, but he unraveled. Y- you start looking at LeBron year 17, and boy, I mean, Chris, I- I'm not no, seeing – he he is as good now as he's been in years, right? He, he was spectacular yesterday. You forgot to mention Kawhi. Kawhi yesterday, that's the worst game I've seen him play in years. <laughs> yeah. uh, really, year, it was stunning how bad he was because we just haven't seen that a lot. But um, LeBron has been great. And I think, Colin, after game one, and we've seen LeBron do this in the past, he kind of gets the lay of the land for the series, right? He'll figure out the opponent in game one. Okay, how do I need to play this series? And he talked about the speed that the Rockets play with. So I think he figured out, okay, I have to pace myself during this series because not only is he counted on offensively, But defensively, he's spending a lot of time on James Harden and poor Russell Westbrook. I mean, I think Westbrook's waking up in the middle of the night with chills like, (laughs) where's LeBron? LeBron! LeBron! Like, I mean, LeBron is just coming out of nowhere, knocking his shot into the stands and dunking on Westbrook. I've been seeing Westbrook treated this harshly in a long time. So LeBron has been fantastic. Yesterday, I thought he paced himself. I thought in the third quarter... They had a comfortable lead. He didn't put his imprint on that. Maybe it was a mistake because obviously Houston got back in it, but he had the energy and took over the fourth. And so, yeah, LeBron is, he's playing great, man. And when he plays that well, and obviously you get it from Anthony Davis, but a few other guys contribute. Danny Green hit threes. Markeith Morris came out of nowhere. Playoff Rondo showed up. If they can get a few of these guys to give them something with the two superstars, They're going to be a tough out. You know, I I said I've watched every single playoff team multiple times. Miami has surprised me. Milwaukee's surprised me on the other end of the spectrum. But I feel like there's seven pretty good teams and then the Clippers. And the Clippers aren't great, but they are occasionally great. And when they play really well and they're really focused, I think they hammer almost everybody here. Are you at all troubled by the inconsistency game to game by the Clippers where they can just completely handcuff a team offensively and then just not show up 48 hours later. I'm with you in that the late, the Clippers are my pick to win it as well, as well as yours. And, and it seems like most people. So I do think they're the best team in the league, but you're right. I mean, this they're up and down and I think they read their press clippings. Yeah. I think they get cocky. I think, you know, they hear everybody thinks they're the best team in the league. Then they go out and blow out Denver in game one, and they relax. And that is a problem. Look, a team to beat them four times in a series is going to be difficult, but I do think the Lakers are capable. I think the two L.A. teams are the best teams in the league. Now, again, I've got the Clippers, but if they don't show up for two or three of the games against the Lakers, they could lose a series because the Lakers, if they play at their top level, then they're capable of beating anybody. They got the two two of the three best players in that series, remember? And so, yeah, the Clippers, some of it, Colin, in addition to their attitude, some of it is that they aren't used to each other yet. They've only played, I think, 14 games with their top players. So there's still a little bit of working out the rotation, getting comfortable with each other. But mainly, I just think that they relax. And they paced themselves. And, and this is so different from what they were last year. Last year, they were dogged. They played hard for 48 minutes. And that's how they stretched Golden State to six games. This year, you got two added stars. Kawhi, we know, likes to pace himself. And so it's just a different mentality that they have but I think they can overcome it enough to win the title. Listen, championship windows, even when you have a bunch of great players, are never they never last as long as we think, be it the Seahawks, the Heatles, uh, the Warriors with KD, Steph, and Clay. Right. They never last as long. And then there are these great teams that, that we expect to win titles. The Sacramento Kings years ago, the Phoenix Suns with Steve Nash. Are the Milwaukee Bucks that team that we kind of said they're going to get there and win a title? And you look at them, Chris... They're going to have, if they don't win this series, the Giannis 
phase has got three playoff series wins in the Eastern Conference that, that we've seen what they are, and it's not championship material going forward. I'm not, I don't put them in, though. You made a good point with the Kings, the sons of Steve Nash, maybe even the Blazers, right, when they had the, the Shaq Kobe yeah. Lakers down. They, they never got one. But I don't put them in that category. Instead, I put them in the LeBron Cleveland category, his first go-round. And you're seeing everybody rip LeBron. Oh, he needs help. He's got to go play with D Wade and Chris Bosh. Oh, he's got to go back to Cleveland, but with Kyrie and Kevin Love. No, LeBron knew you need help. And Giannis is in the same situation in a strange way. I mean, I think LeBron's already validated himself with the championships and all that. But in a strange sense, this kind of validates LeBron. Because Giannis was playing great. Giannis obviously going to be a two-time MVP. One of the few guys to win Defensive Player of the Year and the MVP. They run through the regular season. We've seen nothing like him. And yet he's going to need another star. Yeah. He's, Chris Middleton, as good as he is, is not good enough. Antoine Jameson, Mo Williams, those guys weren't good enough for LeBron. You need a second guy, and if they're not going to get him in Milwaukee, he may have to leave to get that guy. Um, you know, for years and years, um, I think self-awareness is underrated in sports. Knowing what you are, knowing what you're not. Um, and I think, I think most athletes have some degree of it. Some sometimes don't. Um, I'm watching Westbrook, 12 years in the NBA, and he's running around out of control like a rookie. And I would have never doubted his hyper-athleticism. He's fun to watch. I'd pay to watch him. I think he plays harder than any player in the league. I think he loves the game. But I'm watching him yesterday, and I, I honestly believe this, Chris. They were better without him on the floor. Like, he was hurting them as a player. Is it possible that as James Harden, Daryl Morey builds this thing, that's, that they just say, listen, it's just not going to work. <laughs> this is just not going to work, and they would move him. Because I watched yesterday, and I'm like, I've just seen this too many times in big spots. Well, it's an interesting situation. You, I think what you can argue is that they were better off with Chris Paul. Yes. Because remember, that team was a, a pulled hamstring away from possibly winning the championship. I personally think Golden State would have come back from down 3-2 and beaten them, but who knows? I mean, you can certainly argue that Houston would have won that series had Chris not gotten hurt, and then you see what happens against Cleveland in the finals, but that's the argument. I don't think since they jettisoned Chris Paul, unless they can get another star for Westbrook, I think you have to ride this out at least another year. Be, and, and let's look at the Lakers series. LeBron talked about how, man, they play so fast. You just got to get used to it. You can't simulate it, right? They're, they're the greatest show on turf and all that stuff. Well, they're that with Westbrook. Take Westbrook off the court, and they don't play particularly fast. Now, James Harden plays slow. P.J. Tucker's a spot-up shooter. Gordon can penetrate, and he's a great scorer, but he's not killing you with speed. Neither is Covington, Daniel House. So Westbrook, as bad as he was yesterday, and he was bad, he still brings an element of the defense is just off balance because you don't know what the guy is going to do. He's so fast, and he's always in attack mode. So there's a value there. But yesterday, what they did, Colin, they baited him into taking the three. Yeah. They just gave it to him, and he has too much pride to drive. Right, right. And he's sitting there with, you know, seven feet of space between him and the next <laughs> defender. So that's always been his problem. It is what he is. His greatest strength, but it's also his greatest weakness. Chris Broussard, great stuff, buddy. Good seeing you again, Fox NBA analyst. Thanks, man. I like the beard, too. Yeah. I like that. Keep it. Keep it. Yeah, I think that my wife likes it more than management. <laughs> oh, I, I, I like it, though. Right. I like it. <laughs> I feel, feel like Hemingway. I'm an old sage full of wisdom. Chris Broussard, our buddy. Good seeing you. Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from The Herd or go watch a few segments from other shows on FS1.